Hello and welcome to Watch What Crap Ends, a podcast for all that crap we love to talk about on Ye Old Profs. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? USA! 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 Is there any other country in the world prouder than the USA, Ben? <laughs> That's how I There's, am. I'm a proud USA person, I guess. How are you? Yeah, I, well, I too have the Olympics fever. In fact, I was just watching it right before coming on here, watching those adorable, adorable pint-sized gymnasts twirl around on the high bars and the rings and stick their landings. And God bless America, right? Well, God bless us. It is Olympics time right now in the world. Um, that's on. The world is upside down, fucking nuts crazy right now and hilarious. We've got people right now all upset saying that the French people were being mean to Jesus at the Olympics. Like, I can't. I'm just dying. The world is so funny right now. <laughs> if you're well, if you're terrified right now or in a fetal position, rocking back and forth, wondering when the end of the world is coming, let me assure you, it's very soon. So get the fuck off the floor and have a good time. <laughs> Now's the time to go fun. eat some goddamn ice cream and have a good time, because this shit is at least funny. If this is the apocalypse, at least it's funny. You know, I agree. I was watching the Olympics and I mean, it is funny, the, the outrage of random things. So uh, there was like some, I guess, some some podcast or some video where an Australian swimmer was talking about how the American swim team, whenever they come to the pool, they always ring a bunch of cowbells and they went to some, the Australians went to some event and the Americans weren't there and they're like, oh my God. And thank God if it once we didn't have to listen to those infernal Americans coming with those cowbells ringing nonstop, and they showed the video to Michael Phelps, and he was so angry. He was like, "I, I don't even know. I, 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 I can't even believe this trash. I, I, like, if, like you, you better believe. If I were there, I would be like, I would make them eat their words. I was like, listen, okay, listen." You can't deny that we are very annoying. <laughs> We're okay. annoying. We are. We are the worst. Like, honestly, and I don't always watch the Olympics, but I did because you were texting me, you know, during it. And so the next day, you know, streaming on Peacock. So I watched the stream so I could fast forward through, literally fast forward through Kelly Clarkson going, oh, my God, y'all. They are out there in the rain. They are so strong. Look at them. Did you know that it's raining out there? Hey, Peyton, it is raining. Can you believe you got all these medalists out there in the rain? That is just silly. Did you see that girl do a flip? It was in the rain. How can she flip in there? I was like, did they give Kelly cue cards? Because literally all she says is this fucking rain. Anyway, so I watched it so I could fast forward through Kelly, uh, even though I love Kelly, you know, but goddamn. And also come your hair, Kelly. Okay. So anyway, that Kelly's not the point. The point is I did watch it. I loved it because, you know, I love some really? French foolishness. Oh, yeah. I thought it was amazing. I loved the women dancing on my goal weight, the sticks on the bridge where they kept swaying back and forth. I loved the threesome in the library where all like the clown, like the that drove clowns me nuts. and the makeup started sequence. having a threesome. Lady Gaga's weird sequence. number. I literally loved every single thing about it. I was dying laughing. I loved the the metal part. It was like heavy metal with Marie. Oh, the metal part was great. Head. <laughs> I just loved it. I so thought... weird. I thought the opening ceremonies were garbage, except for when they finally got the Eiffel Tower, and then it was amazing, and then Celine came out, and then there was the, the torch and the balloon. I love that. But I thought everything along the River Seine was so janky. It just felt small. And like Lady Gaga, like performing on like a little pier. It felt like a little pier. She's like in this little corner. No one was around her. One of her dancers falls right over. It was just everything just felt so strange to me. And, it, and like I love strange. But to me, this was like, no, I like that the athletes came in on boats. That was cool. But like, I think it all should have been in front of the Eiffel Tower personally. I really loved it. I thought it was so cool watching the boats go all through the city on the river and then seeing all the landmarks and having having them do all the numbers at these huge, amazing landmarks I thought was so cool. And then the French weirdness of like mixing porn with like religious iconography and just being weird, just being fucking weirdos. You know, I just love that. I thought it was... <laughs> thought it was so good and so funny and so many parts of it were touching like i loved obviously celine i loved the um lady singing imagine that was oh on her like beautiful. floating on, too, and then on the barge like, or whatever that was like the trash <laughs> barge whatever that was i thought that, that was lady, beautiful because that point like that river water was bouncing and she was like be <laughs> And she did it. She did great. And then the opera singer on top of the whatever. And then all the smoke stuff that was coming out, and the fireworks and the streamers. I just thought it was so good. Maybe because I just 
I don't know, maybe because I'm desperate for entertainment. Anyway, I thought it was so good. But one of the things I did notice, like America, you know, and I love being from America. And like, I'm so grateful for blah, 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 all the opportunity, et cetera, et cetera. Michael Phelps, calm down, Michael Phelps. But America, seriously, like, why is our boat the only boat? First of all, everyone's hanging off our boat. Like every uh, Lithuania, like gets this little tiny, you know, thimble. And then we're on like a fucking showboat, you know, a million people, which is fine. That's good for us. But then we never shut up. Like Lithuania doesn't pass by everybody going Lithuania, Lithu. We're the only ones who have to pass by every fucking person going USA, you Like we know, we know where you're from. Okay, calm down, America. I know, and then and then like and then we get like mad when people are like, God, those Americans are like really loud, <laughs> and we're like, how dare worry. they say that? <laughs> how dare they say that? Like, I mean, we're ringing cowbells at a, a swimming pool, and and people are getting annoyed by it, and then we're shocked. You know, and like, it's a real good segue into Real Housewives of New Jersey because it's real. Housewives of New Jersey is a show about a lack of self awareness, if there ever was one, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, we can segue into that. Okay, so I everybody, segued. Um, I segue. I love I America, like... but Jesus, we're annoying. Let's just like <laughs> calm down. Okay, we get it. Like we're very proud of ourselves. Um, okay, so let's go into this Real Housewives of New Jersey. This episode is called Don't Trial This at Home, which is pretty funny. And um, loved it. I thought it was very funny. Hilarious. Um, apparently on Andy's show, which we'll talk about later on Crappy Hour, which is tonight, uh, every other Monday, 5.30, we'll be doing it on YouTube from now on. So just find us on YouTube. Yeah. Um, Instagram is too... Uh, Instagram sucks every week, so we're moving it. Sorry, Instagram. Bye. So um, anyway, find us on YouTube or, you know, wherever you listen to podcasts. It'll be out later in the week. But we'll talk about this later there. But Andy apparently said on his show that it's going to be an all-new cast next year, which I've not verified. I just saw it on Bravo and Cocktails on Instagram. So that's sad because I thought this was so fucking funny. This was a classic (laughs) Teresa's an Idiot episode. With really just everybody being ridiculous and I let Marge being ridiculous. Just mm-hmm. watching these people ruffle each other's feathers was so fucking funny to me. I loved it. This episode was hilarious. I was cracking up. The whole thing was was amazing from start to finish. Uh, it's been a good season. I'm sorry. It may be toxic, but it's been a good season. Uh, you know, for sure, we could tell that changes needed to be made because there is an, there is a problem on this cast, you know, a huge feud, and there's like a lot of behind the scenes issues, but also um, a full a full revamp. That's wild. It's wild because you know New York got a full revamp, but they were also down to like five people, probably down to four because Ebony probably was not going to come back. Leah probably was not going to come back, so they had not not a lot of people left. So they just revamped the whole thing. But like, if you look at something like Atlanta, for instance, Atlanta, I think, was in a much worse place in terms of actually like like putting out good episodes, and they didn't get a full revamp. So it just must have been really, really bad behind the scenes on New Jersey to the point where the producers were like, "Let's get rid of them all because they're too much of a pain in the ass for us." Yes, and a pain in the ass they are. You know what a group. Pain what in the ass they are. And, <laughs> and by the way. Group. In case you somehow missed it, I was on Melissa Gorga's podcast last week, so just definitely check that out. It's called On Display, so look for the episode with me, Ben Mandelker. Yes, Ben was on display last week with the Melissa Gorga. On display. On display. Yeah, yes. it was fun. I was um, about being there. Yeah, sorry I couldn't make that. Um, so let's go to uh, start the episode. So we start with a, like the 50s background music and um we are kind of in the 50s as usual with this show where it's like women working what? but uh today it is valentina danielle's daughter uh basically acting like one of the husbands on this show just screaming boner over and over yeah. and cracking up walking around pointing at people who get boners so i was like you fit right in this episode it's a sausage fest of an episode yeah she just goes boner and then he was like, no, no, no. Okay, listen, that, that 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 stays that word stays in the house. If you were to say that word in school, it wouldn't be appropriate, okay? And she just she just keeps on going boner, boner. Boner, boner, boner. Yeah, and I don't think I've ever heard the word Pisha deal until this season, but we hear it every episode. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of it. P- Man, you got, look at me. I even say Pisha deal, I start choking. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, which I guess is if a winner. Ha- it's anaphylactic. Everyone, Ronnie has to go to the hospital. It's anaphylactic. What's that? What's that? <laughs> I love, of course, no one on Jersey knows what anaphylactic means. Uh, so, yes, yeah, Danielle's like, you don't, you don't got a piece of deal, man. Stop trying to have a piece of deal. You don't even got one. And she goes, yeah, but these two do. And she points to her dad and her brother. <laughs> and she goes, yeah, they do. And she goes, these two guys eh, stand next to each other. These two got boners connected. Ah. <laughs> Nate's like, no, we don't. We don't. Then over at the Gorgas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Joe Gork was like, hey, so I texted everybody to come over to guys night. Got a steak guy coming, gonna play some poker, but Paulie's being a little wishy-washy, and Bill responded, I got surgery. I mean, who's got surgery on a Friday night, right? What am I what I'm talking about? Huh? And Melissa's like, he could have surgeries on Friday night. He's like, What are you nuts? Who does that? Pussies, that's who, huh? Pussies get <laughs> pussies get surgery on Friday night, am I right? Huh? <laughs> And then we have uh, over at the Fudas, um, we have a check in on her daughters. Her daughters are just like little human cabbage patch dolls. They're very cute. And um, basically, uh, Juliana has had tremendous progress ever since she had her surgery. And uh, she's now talking and she's walking. And she still, to me, like looks in the in the cutest possible way, like a little like a little 45 year old woman in baby form, you know, which is like my favorite version of a baby. I love when babies look like adults like that, like, <laughs> like strange, small adults. And that's what yeah. she looks like. She, she literally looks like she is ready to collect your receipts for accounting. Well, don't they even call her beanie, which is kind of like a little older lady's name. <laughs> I know. I mean, except for beanie, what's her buns? Um, but in what's her bun? Feldstein? Feld- Feldstein? Feldstein? Something like that. Yeah. Feldstein or Feldman? Feldstein. Yeah. Yeah, Jonah Hill's sister, right? Beanie, yeah. Beanie Filsey. Um, So, yeah, she's not an older lady, but doesn't that just sound like an older lady in the retirement home? Get over here, Beanie. Come on. We've been waiting for you. <laughs> well, what are we going to we supposed to play bridge without you? Come on, Beanie. Come on. <laughs> so, uh, they, you know, it's a Rachel Fuda scene. So, she's very serious about it. She's like, guys, since Beanie got her tongue tie surgery, I was like, oh my God, for fuck's sake. If you say tongue tied one more time, she's like, but then guess what? Beanie's doing so good without her tongue tied. Today, she finally stood on a tongue. It was amazing. Beanie, stand on your tongue again. And Beanie's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that surgery was amazing, whatever you did. She did great work. Yeah, so Beanie stood up for the first time on her own, which was exciting. We saw the, the security footage of it. And uh, she immediately um, reprimanded her sister for stealing office supplies. Like, you know what? These are not for you to take. This is for the office. I was like, wow, she has really come so far so quickly. <laughs> so wait, I don't know which one is which, but there's a Juliana and a Beanie. So I probably messed up everybody's names. No, no, no. I don't know either. I think Giuliani. I mean, <laughs> there's also. That's what I keep also thinking. Also like, Why would you name your baby Giuliani? It's so problematic. <laughs> you know, the baby's always calling <laughs> press conferences in front of dry cleaners. It's like, we're going to we're going to talk about tongue ties. It's like her hair dies melting on her face. Um, I, uh, I think, I think Juliana is, she's breaking into government buildings. <laughs> I think Juliana is beanie. And then the other one is just a, a name that shall not be mentioned <laughs> because we don't remember. Yeah. We don't remember. Um, so she's like, but guess what beanie can do beanie sing, row your boat. And Beanie's like, oh, yeah, she goes, oh my God, that's amazing, Beanie. That is amazing. <laughs> Someone put Beanie in the Eiffel Tower and have her close out the opening ceremonies because that was beautiful. <laughs> Beanie overcame so much to be here. Yeah. Oh, Celine. Celine so, um, um, why is this scene still going on? This is a very long it's scene. It's a very long scene. I don't, scene, really, I don't really understand why. It's it's kind of like when you watch House of the Dragon and it's only got one episode left. Because this show is on the same trajectory as far as episode numbers. So House of the Dragon ends next week and this ends next week. So it's the penultimate right. episode of both. And but this I'm, one has more fire so much time talking about this. Like, why are we still talking about tongue-tied babies? Like, get on with it. It's the second to last episode. We have things to do. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, hello. We still need we still need a uh, 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 what's her face to uh, Danielle to to reunite with her dad. Okay, we only have one episode left for that. Okay. Yeah, where's so, the dad? Re- I need to see uh, some some fist biting. He's okay. gonna show up at rails. Like, oh, oh, oh. 
I finally see my daughter, and she's in a fight. <laughs> oh. And so now let's go over to the Aiden's house. Olivia is my hero, by the way. My little eagle is dressed in Party City tinsel dress skirt thing. And she's like, mm -hmm. Taylor Swift, here I come, bitch. <laughs> and Jennifer Aiden's like, look at you. That's cute, baby. And Olivia's like, thanks, Ma. Can you unzip me now? And she goes, yeah, I can, baby doll. <laughs> They're like some sort of like mother daughter combo in, a, in like a musical from the 50s. Yeah. She's like, I need to go upstairs, mama. I gotta do my skincare routine. Just like you do it, baby. My little angel face, little baby. Um, so I just read this thing the other day talking about how the um pandemic or whatever, like when we were all the stuck at home portion of the pandemic, Locked uh out. how that ruined children because children were not able to be social or whatever. And also how it changed the economy of skincare because the kids were going on TikTok and all they could do was skincare. So you've got like five year olds doing fucking facials and shit on TikTok wow. or whatever. And they were talking about how now the parents have to spend hundreds of dollars a month getting these kids fucking face products when they are they're already young. They have no wrinkles. And that's so true. My niece is like that. And I never knew that we could also blame that on the pandemic. Do you know how much wow. that costs? That's a very expensive step. So thanks a lot, pandemic. Yeah. Congratulations, oil of Olay. So I'm sure that's what they're all using. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, it's very, it's very modern. <laughs> a lot very of Olay heads out there. <laughs> Mama! I'll be back. I'm going to do a hot oil treatment and a little Noxzema. Uh, what, what's the one that's the white cream that you, is that Noxzema? That you Clearasil, maybe? That's what no, I do. The white, the white cold cream that you put on your face. Neutrogena? It's Noxzema. Noxzema. There's Noxzema and Neutrogena. There's a Proactive. I don't know any other thing. Yeah, Noxzema yeah. cold cream. My Mima used to wear that. It was horrifying. She'd come out looking like Mrs. Doubtfire. We're like, oh, Mima. Like, you, got, you got to do it. That's how you stay young. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. <laughs> okay, so um, Olivia goes to do healthcare, and Bill is like, mm, you started a skincare routine. Mm. And Gabrielle is like, yeah, I guess she had a pimple the size of Mount Everest on her chin. <laughs> and Olivia goes, oh, oh, oh. So, mm, skincare. Gotta love it. Mm. Don't say it like it's a mockery, Papa. Skincare ain't nothing to mock. So the kids go away, and Jennifer Aiden's like, Hey, baby, you want to sit down and hang out? He's like, mm, Yes, baby girl. I'm very interested in hearing what you have to say on account of my sexual attraction to you. Mm. Oh, good. How was work, babe? <laughs> Exhausting. And, but you know what? You're worth the work. You're worth it. Not me. Your actual job, baby. He's like, Oh, that was fun reason to be away from this work. She's like, okay, talk about surgery. She's like, oh, six hours, I'm so exhausted. She goes, yeah, you need a massage later. Yeah, like on your prostate. Let's milk your prostate later, baby. I told the other girls that I like to milk your prostate when we don't have a lot of time. I just go in there, stick my finger in, and push the button, baby, push the button, push the button. Ooh, wow. <laughs> you really told them a lot, didn't you? I love that you've turned fucking me up the bum hole into a color purple number. <laughs> well, as I like to say, I may not be sexually aroused, but I am here. <laughs> I've got your penis. I've got your prostate too. <laughs> <laughs> For all the color purple heads out there. <laughs> For all the Cynthia Revo fans who've been assaulted with wicked commercials during the Olympics. Um, so Jennifer Aiden's like, yeah, we talked about milking your prostate on TV. That was fun. So, you know, uh, Dolores is like, I don't like talking about sex. Can we not talk about it? And I'm like, my kids are going to be real embarrassed by this conversation. <laughs> so speaking of prostate milking, I heard Joe Gorga texts you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, mm, right. There was a group text with everybody except Louis, and I said, I'm in surgery for that night, but I have plans at Louis's. Mm. Oh, really? What's going on at Louis's? I don't know, but 
As far as I can tell, probably a whole bunch of limp dick action, because without that little muscle man Joe Gorka, I can't see anything getting up. Mm. <laughs> so she said, like, well, I'm, I don't think Nate's going in. He's a little bitch boy anyway. And he said, listen to this one. Dolores and Jen are planning a trip for us, because we're going to heal. But the thing is, I'm not saying nothing to Danielle until she said something to me first. <laughs> you think of that? Very much. Yeah, baby. You're making your kids like, proud on every front today. I know. She's like, but then I can move on because I can move on with anyone, baby. He's like, mm, how about you move your finger onto my prostate? Mm. <laughs> so, uh, so then we find out. So this is what we just found out that the men are going to be having dueling midnights, guys. Really. It's the penultimate episode, and you're spending it on the husbands? <laughs> Come on. And I feel like this is people, you know, on Antiques Roadshow, when people are always shocked that they've had something in their house that's worth money. I feel like that's what the producers of the show are. You've got all this stuff. You think it's junk, all these housewives, and now you're wasting time with the men. Do you need to go on a show to let me tell you how valuable these ladies are? Dueling men's nights? Joe Gorga with a sponsored fucking steak night? Come on. That being said, I thought both men's nights were surprisingly very funny for different reasons. So it turned yeah. out okay. But but at this point, I was like, really? So now we go over to Dolores and Paul's house. And uh, Dolores is FaceTiming Jen Fessler. And Fessler's like, can you see him there? <laughs> it's like she's like in the shadows. No, not really. It's very, very dark where you watch. Well, I don't know. There's something going on with FaceTime. It's almost like I stuck it up James Gandolfini's butthole. <laughs> that was for you, James. That was for you. Anyway, did you find a house for the party? I mean, for the retreat? I found the perfect house in the Berkshires. It's big enough for all of us. And then it has a guest house for people who don't like us to stay in. <laughs> oh, my God. That couldn't be any more perfect. I can't imagine anything going wrong with it. It was difficult not only to find a separate guest house, but a place that had a clear path from the living room to the dining room to the kitchen to the living room to the dining room to the kitchen i'm going to be doing a lot of thinking on that trip <laughs> well it sounds great and i'm assuming that it's it's, it's outfitted with plenty of sprinklers and and uh and uh, fire extinguishers so excited for our stay <laughs> um so she's like i'm ner dolores is like i'm nervous but i hope that we can all get along because mama's got to pay for a lot a lot of new faces in the next few years. And Fester's like, well, Jackie and Margaret, you can't love each other for that many years and just completely turn it off, can you? I mean, the respect that they had for each other. I mean, it's just sad. It's sad, I tell you. Well, the goal is not to make people make up and be friends. The goal is to offload all these extra crocodile focaccias I've accumulated, okay? Someone's got to eat them, okay? <laughs> I don't know that everybody is meant to be friends, but say what has to be said in a civil way. Specifically, please pass the focaccia. And then she goes, this is weird reading it back, but she goes, and guess what? There's going to be a fire pit. And so we're going to either bond or we're going to throw each other in the fire. Let's see how it goes. Like, Ooh, <laughs> that is funny. That's weird, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So first was like, love fire pits. I love fire pits. As a matter of fact, I feel like I've been thrown in one because of Rachel Fuda being mean to me about food. I'm food attire. Food attire. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not obsessed. What were we talking about? Hmm? While we're going to do some team building things, there's going to be a corn maze, which will bring us all together, I'm sure, and a picnic at a farm, and we'll have a trust circle, and I'm just going to keep everybody busy and keep their mind off of how much they hate each other, you know, because I'm not saying we're going to have a big goombaya moment out there, okay? Did you say goombaya? Goombaya? Is that what you said? Goom? Yes. Baya? Goom with Goom a G? Goom goombaya. Goom yes. Oh, God, I love I, I don't detect anything wrong with what I said. We're going to have crocodile again. focaccias and a, kum, a gumbaya moment. <laughs> <laughs> but she says it again to us. She's like, listen, this isn't a gumbaya moment. All right. It's going to be work on ourselves. Boot camp. <laughs> and then Fessler just, crack, just cuts the Fessler cracking up to us. She's like, that's that's gumbaya. <laughs> she's love these Italian girls. They're just the best. <laughs> you got to brand it. You know, it's <laughs> on thing. Goodbye. She goes, listen, we, we we either figure this out or the friend group that we have, for me personally, it's over. Listen, now's the chance. I have two ways I could go down. I could be a lady who owns an electrical company with this group of friends, or I can be a lady who owns an electrical company without these group of friends. <laughs> either way, I've got a desk and a job I don't really understand yet. <laughs> listen, this friend group, 
is like one of Frank's flips just falling apart everywhere. Okay. <laughs> this friend group is like the pebble tiles of Home Depot. Okay. Nobody really wants it, but we're all going to try and make it work because it's extremely cheap. <laughs> and people apparently like it enough. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have Margaret. Uh, she shows up in a tracksuit at a uh, at a place called Jackson Hole, which is neither <laughs> a representative of Jackson nor a hole. Um, I love the idea of a, di a little diner called Jackson Hole in the middle of New Jersey. So she gets she arrives with Fessler. They do it does the classic Margaret um, hug where she drapes both of her hands in someone's shoulders, sort of like she's hanging on, like like almost like sloth like you know, and then does the. Mwah! on both cheeks very much that's a maj hug right there oh my god who are you right now you don't even look like yourself you look so young what am i having lunch with a baby like seriously <laughs> what is what does somebody have an injection of something because i think i can get stem cells off of my friend here like seriously what did you just come out of the womb like how are you walking already Jeez. jennifer i just saw the security footage of you standing up for the first time oh wait guess what that was rachel fuda's daughter it's so hard to tell the babies apart sometimes you look so young <laughs> So a bee comes and it's trying to get Fessler again. She's like, is that a bee? Is that a bee? I cannot with the bees. Why are the bees always chasing me? So I'm not afraid of bees. The bees don't get you. They get me. <laughs> and Fessler's like, yeah, you didn't get sung last time. And then we have footage of Jen Fessler. I don't remember this. Maybe this was unseen footage. But she gets stung by it. She's just talking to Margaret. She gets stung. She goes, oh, I was just, I was just stung by a bee. Like, okay, well, you're a little baby puss. Okay, you, you got stung by a bee. Guess what? I got stung by Louis. All right? Much worse. All right? So be quiet, you little puss. Hey, wait a Could you bring over a pair of boots for puss? Because seriously, <laughs> like, might as well make it a payday. You know what I'm saying? Jesus Christ. Uh, so so uh, Margaret is uh, laughing at her. Yeah, she was laughing at her being stung before, and now she's laughing at her in the present as well. And she's like, oh, well, you think that's funny? You thought it was funny last time, too. Well, I'm glad, glad you're enjoying this. Baby's in pain. What can I tell you? It's hilarious <laughs> you know, to me. You know what's so funny is that when this scene happened, I started reflecting about getting stung by a bee. I've never been stung by a bee. And I'm actually very scared about getting stung by a bee because I don't know if I'm allergic or not. And it's so funny that I was thinking – this made me. this scene made me think of it not realizing that there would be an anaphylactic shock scene later in the episode. Does that mean it's I'm allergic weird. to bees? I don't know. You're allergic to references to, to things that you could get anaphylactic shock from. You're like, oh my God. I have so my God's <laughs> done. You're just, you're just getting anaphylactic <laughs> shock from things that scare have, you on TV. I have I am allergic to exposure to allergies. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so they order stuff, and um, neither one of them are going to eat the stuff. So that's really funny because when you know that they're not going to be able to eat it, it's just funny what they're projecting onto the audience that they're eating, like the, the reputations that they want. Like Marge is like, you know, but I, well, I think Fessler is the one who's like, I'm going to have a cheeseburger and I'm going to have a chocolate milkshake as well. And you know what? I'm going to have an avocado. I want sauteed onions. You know what? Do you have Crisco that you could put a straw in? Because I love <laughs> calories. Okay. I'm not gonna lie. I was staring at Jen Fester's chocolate milkshake the entire scene. I was like, <sighs> so anyway, a motorcycle goes by. That's really I got loud. one the other day from um, McDonald's. I got a chocolate shake. It sucked. I haven't had a chocolate shake from McDonald's since I was a kid. The reviews are in. Do better. They're bad. They're They're bad. bad. Really bad. I mean, that was a shame. I actually had to throw it away and go to Wendy's. And I would like to say, Wendy's, you've fallen pretty far in your French fry department but your Frosties are still as good as ever. So thank you for being consistent about at least one thing. Let me tell you something, World. okay? Shake Shack, unsurprisingly, they have actually really good chocolate shakes. I'm very discriminating about my chocolate shakes because there is a school of thought that if someone asks for a chocolate shake, you make a milkshake with vanilla ice cream and you add chocolate syrup to it. And to that I say, fuck you and fuck everyone related to you because that is not a chocolate shake. It is not as it's, it just tastes like vanilla with some chocolate syrup in it. A proper chocolate shake needs to have chocolate, chocolate ice cream in it. And I get really upset when I order a chocolate shake and I get like a faux chocolate shake. However, I will say Shake Shack does a very good job. And that is yeah, but I'm not standing in line like that to get a shake. I mean, Shake Shack's stupid. Like, you have to go stand in line for hours. Well, not hours anymore. They, you just have to, like, I stand mean, in line and stuff. Yeah. Well, just so you know, there is a place that opened up right here in Hollywood that I went to called The Window, <laughs> spelled W-I-N-D-O. So, like, The Window. 
and they have an amazing chocolate shake. The only downside is you have to go to Hollywood and Highland, but it might be worth it because it's such a good chocolate shake. So everyone it's coming to town, that's a little free advice to tourists in Los Angeles. Get the chocolate the window. Shake. Oh, no. Okay, so um, now they start talking about Joe and how Joe, you know, could have can't. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. I mean, I don't know. You know, he gets these tests. Like sometimes he gets a test that says maybe you have cancer. Then he gets a test that says maybe you don't have cancer. Then he gets a test that says Joe, you didn't really straighten out the the wallpaper in the living room. And then he gets another test and it says Joe, I forgive you because you could possibly have cancer. Then he gets another test that's like, but Joe, I can't stop staring at the wallpaper being uneven in the living room. Please fix it, Joe. <laughs> That's like, well, I'm not really worried about it. You're a little bit of a hypochondriac. I'm worried more about you. I mean, you're the crazy one. You're the one who's terrified of, of all these outcomes. Oh my God, a bee. Oh my God, a bee. I see a bee over there. There's a bee. Oh my God, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here, bud. Well, I wanna tell you something. I've had a call and it's from Teresa. And Teresa invited me over and get this. She said she's having some of us over because her lawyer has actual court findings that are pertaining to John Food and never did a thing. First of all, I wanna say that. <laughs> And if he did, he didn't mean to. Now, the court findings are about you, you, Margaret, you. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? And we have a flashback to Teresa on FaceTime inviting the women over to meet James Letter. She's calling all of them. She's like, hi, I want to invite all of you over on Thursday because I'm having my lawyer come over. And I want to I wanna talk to you about what Margaret did to me because I want you to hear it from the horse's mouth because these are facts. These are facts that are being told to you from a horse. A horse, that's my, my lawyer. Okay, Mike. <laughs> I love that Teresa has had all the season to plan this and still doesn't know what from the horse's mouth means. Also, yeah, also James Leonard is not the horse's mouth. He is literally That's not what involved I'm saying. in the case. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Straight from the horse's mouth would be Marge, not James <laughs> Leonard. As the crow flies. So um, Margaret's like, what findings? And Fessa's like, well, I don't know. She's like, well, you know what? They lie incessantly. Do you think this man would not lie? Just so you know, he has her attorney. She, he, was, he was her attorney when she went to jail, okay? And see how that turned out, okay? <laughs> and then we see... Uh, <laughs> We, the, the editors are so shady because we see uh, what she meant, which is James Leonard going, I just got off the phone with Teresa. She said the power's out of prison, so she can't do any emails with you. But she'll call <laughs> us later. I'm like, oh, yeah, he is just used to lying his ass off. Yeah, he, he is. So Mark was like, I mean, like, he's going to vouch for her like he's the fucking Pope. This guy's actually as low as her. Okay, guess what, everyone, America? James Leonard's office is near the meth clinic in Atlantic City. My attorney's office is on Madison Avenue, okay? My attorney would never be holding court, quote unquote, because that's a pun, to discredit somebody. But that's what happens when your office is near the meth clinic. <laughs> Well, I think it's disgusting that anybody would go there to listen to an attorney that would try to bash me. And who else is going? Who else is going? Who? Who? Tell me now. Tell me right now. Well, I tell don't need this tell hamburger. You better tell me before I. You better tell me before I take a bite of this hamburger. Just kidding. It was an empty threat. Okay. You know what? Go ahead. <laughs> you better tell me before I summon all the bees in this neighborhood to come sting your face. She goes, Oh, okay. Well, I think I've I got honey it. in my purse, and don't think I won't rub it all over your breasts. <laughs> Only because you're so sweet. I can't help it. So Fessler's like, well, I think Danielle and Aiden and Dolores and Jackie. And then we see Teresa inviting all of them and everything. And Jack, and of course, Jack is like, oh, yeah, I do want to be there as your friend. I would love to come over and hear you talk shit about Margaret. That'd be great. I'm, I'm down. <laughs> so everybody's saying yes, you know. And then Marge is like, oh, really? Dolores is going to go? I saw her in your flashback. That is not going to work for me. I'm calling <laughs> Dolores right now. It's like, well, why don't we just sit with that? For no, we're not sitting with anything. No, we're fucking not. You get over here right now. You know what? What's being said about me? It's anybody showing up to a dinner party to talk shit about me? What are you fucking crazy? Give me that fuck. It's like, well, it's not That's a dinner party. I don't know that we're actually going to get dinner. So maybe it's not a dinner party. Maybe it's a breakfast party. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe it's a snacks party. Maybe it's a Capri Sun party. Who knows, really? All I know is none of this is John Fuda's fault. He did nothing. <laughs> And Margaret goes, okay, well, but that's even worse. No food? Have some respect. If you're going to talk shit about me, at least feed them, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That was that was like literally like a written comedy line of a movie. Like, that was amazing. <laughs> so funny. So she calls Dolores, and Dolores is like, hello. She, oh, you know what? You know what? I am pissed off. I'm pissed off. I'm here with an infant. 
who is telling me that there's an event being thrown about me. You know what? Who does that? Throwing an event to talk about me with an attorney? Why would anybody show up to that? Why? You tell me why right now. Well, you know what? People are hungry. I've got focaccia. I'm ready to offload it. She wants to, She wants me to hear her out, and I'm not going to change anything that I have thought about you. She says, well, hear her out with an attorney against me. There comes a time and a place that someone's got to stand up for what's right, and anybody engaging in negativity against me, not correct, okay? Especially on an empty stomach. I have to go. You know, I'm disappointed that anyone would engage in that nonsense. I know you're eating. I'll talk to you later. Okay, I love you. Bye. <laughs> Dolores, Dolores is getting told off and just like sitting there eating a snack. She's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I am going. <laughs> okay, you know what? I can see that you're eating. I respect food. Okay, I'm glad you're eating that because you're not going to be eating at Teresa's house, that fucking cretin. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's call Danielle next. Okay, Danielle, it's me, Margaret, Margaret Josephs. The Margaret Josephs who's on your TV show. Come on, pay attention. Okay, are you going to <laughs> Teresa's instead of ba- bashing of me on Thursday night? She's like, I got no idea what she's trying to say. You know, that stuff that's happening in this court case with Lori, she just wants us to hear her out. I, mean, I don't know. I'm just going because it says it's a dinner party. We're going to get food, right? We're going to get food. You know, you know what, what? Good. What happened in this court case with Louie? Who gives a shit? Okay, you know what? The omelet just arrived. I, I, no, I, I can't have a cold omelet. I'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> up right away. <laughs> Are you going? Oh, wait. An omelet's here. Bye. <laughs> Listen, there's a lot I can take. I cannot take a cold omelet. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs> I wish they had shown a flashback at the time that she and Siggy Flicker had a fight in the diner and she just had a giant omelet in front of her <laughs> the entire time. She's Remember learned. That? Yeah, she's learned. She's like, I tried to eat that omelet later. It was the worst thing that ever happened to me in season one. So then um, f- she's like, oh, God, none of this has anything to do with me. I could give two shits. You're fucking obsessed with your ex-fiance. Fi- you lose that. <laughs> and Fester's like, for whatever reason, it didn't sound bad when I was talking to her about it. But right now that I'm talking to you and I can see that you're very upset about it, I guess it is bad. I mean, I guess it is bad. Well, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to text her right now. And I'm going to say, listen, I'm not going to make it on Thursday. Marge is watching me right now. Our omelet's getting cold and I don't want to be the one to suffer. <laughs> and you can just tell that she's a little fucking sucker. And she goes, oh, well, I'm not going to include that part, but I'm just going to say, have fun, enjoy yourselves. And uh, oh, and uh, if something ever happens to me with a bee sting and anaphylactic shock, just know Margaret did it to me. Uh, not to sound like Margaret is standing over me with a canister of Hershey's chocolate and threatening to pour it over my head to attract more bees. <laughs> but if I die... That is why I've died. I hope you understand. And Marge is like, oh, hope you understand. Who gives a shit if she understands? Okay, <laughs> who gives a shit? She goes, whatever. I, that's what I said. That was a wording I chose to use. Okay, are we done here? Oh, stop being a little puss. Jesus. <laughs> You're just a little puss. You're just a little puss follow a weak backbone person. Okay, I love you. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> All right, go, go get back in your car seat and have someone drive you home. Baby shouldn't be driving. Just go. <laughs> Commercials. Here comes one right now. So now we go to the Gorga household. It's time for Guys Night Part One, the, the Gorga version. And there's a neon sign that says, The meat made me do it, which is, I don't even understand. There's no there's no wordplay there, right? There's just it's just a sign saying the meat made me do it. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's very Jersey. <laughs> It is, and I, I love that no one on this show can even just have people over for dinner. It's got to be some fucking sponsored thing, you know? The meat made me do it! And so Joe Gore, so basically they're getting set up for this party, and uh, Gore, uh, Melissa's like, wow, look who's here, Joe B in the house. And he's like, what up, what up, brother? Hey, look, everybody, this is Joe Benigno. All right, Joe Benigno, these are the meat guys. The meat made them do it. So it's like, great. Isn't that great? <laughs> I felt, by the way, I felt so bad for that lobster, not because it was about to get killed, because of course that's sad, but like that lobster in its last, last few moments in life is just sitting there staring, staring at its future, like where it will be le- giving up the ghost and Joe Gorga comes up and pokes it. <laughs> no, no, no lobster needs it. I know, that, that, lobster's, chapter. that lobster's <laughs> last thoughts were, ow, and is it Benino or Benigno? <laughs> The lobster's like, there he is. (laughs) (laughs) 
So um, uh, anyway, guys, night starts. The, the, Melissa, you know, Melissa's like, "Hi, Joe. Okay, I'm gonna take your coat. I'm gonna be right upstairs. I'm gonna bring this water up to Antonia. Bye, guys." That was like all Melissa did this entire episode. <laughs> yeah. So uh, John Fuda comes in and he's like flicking his collar and he's in pajamas and. Uh, <laughs> He comes in and he's got an also a blue shirt that says like Italian ingredients and then it lists like the ingredients of being an Italian, <laughs> which is pretty funny. I didn't read the whole shirt, but I can only imagine it was like salami, even hot that. air, pomade, focaccia, <laughs> focaccia <laughs> lizards, really lizard focaccia. shaped out of focaccia. <laughs> So uh, Joe, Joe Benito was like, were those your fathers? And he's like, Joe Goku's like, hey, I hope not. I hope not. And Fudo's like, I'm just, you know, I'm taking a page out of your brother-in-law's book. And we see a flashback of Louis saying, I look at your four nieces and I wear your father's pajamas and I have to make them feel safe. Do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Joe Cork up being like, what the fuck? <laughs> Okay, so then we go to Teresa's house, and Louis having a boys' night. Also, dun dun dun, and he's there with George Costanza's father, uh, Louis Senior. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, so Dad, let me talk to you, okay? What we're we gonna do here on guys' night? We're gonna be easy, you know, because we work, we work so hard, you know. Bill works his ass off. Paulie does something. No one really understands it. <laughs> might be electricity. Might be hookers. Who am I to judge? You know, we're getting to a place where we can just be, you know, have some food, maybe have a drink. You know how it goes, Dad. <laughs> That's like, what did you say? So then Teresa's like, meme. Vesla's not coming on Thursday. She thought Margaret was going to be going on, and then Margaret must have talked her out of coming here. And then, like, I'm not trying to bash Margaret, Dad. I'm just, like, trying to lay out the facts. And if the facts bash Margaret, so be it. And she's like, I'm so relieved that the case is finally over. That now I can tell everybody why I've been stressing out for the past six months, all right? Well, really, the last three years, which <laughs> all started with Margaret. Forcing me to marry a fucking crazy person. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like the fact that Teresa is going to try and offload all of her stress onto Margaret when she's married to a freaking psychopath is going to be funny. I can't wait to see this. I know we see headlines about how the uh, how Louis won the legal battle and and like the the fiance the ex fiance was denied a restraining order or whatever. So Teresa's like, you know, we are. Uh, we found out a lot of stuff, unfortunately, you know, and this woman, I thought that was my friend dad, has been hurting us, like, for the past three years. And I just want everyone to hear that Margaret came up in the court case, and I can't wait to give away her secret, because they, they need to know who they're associating with. And he goes, you know, there's an old saying that says the dirt always rises to the top. That's not the saying. Not what is saying. wrong with everybody on this show? My God, dirt does not rise to the top. Cream rises to the top. Dirt sinks like, to the bottom, sir. Okay. And like the saying is to say, like cream, like the good stuff always rises to the top. But I love that, like in the in Louis's family, the version is, hey, you know what? Don't worry about it because all the shit rises to the top. All the worst parts <laughs> about you—that's the stuff that always comes out. Yeah. So then we go to Gorga's guys night and um, Marge calls and Benino's like, you OK? She's like, I'm good. I'm good. Listen, put me on speaker. OK, listen, there's some crazy shit. I just had lunch with Jen Fessler. My alma almost got cold. Basically, Jen Fessler showed up going, meh, meh, moo, moo. Then she pooped her pants like literally baby, <laughs> you know, so I had my omelet. And then Jen Fessler was like, I just have to tell you that Teresa invited me, Dolores, Bougie, Jackie, Jennifer J with James Leonard, her fat fucking attorney all right and she's uh, some big bomb from the court case about me oh my god she's obsessed with obviously i don't care i don't even care anything about Teresa. that fucking snake that fucking loser listen to how not bad i am <laughs> okay anyway bye guys my omelet's getting cold so joe benino's like wow uh i guess uh she's like yeah you know what she told the lawyer she spent four hundred thousand dollars on their attorney with this case and joe benino's like four hundred thousand dollars like yeah i think louis told her they spent four hundred thousand dollars and he probably pissed the money away somewhere else imagine how stupid she is by the way good theory on march's part that is 100 like I, I cannot imagine that being not true right like there's no way they spent four hundred thousand dollars on a restraining order case right right 
Well, it's never from what I from what I learned from the Bravo Docket podcast, it's never ending. It just keeps going. They just keep suing each other over and over and all this stuff. Like she is trying to get a restraining order on him. He supposed or she's also claiming that he he and uh the what's the guy, the famous guy that he said was but the private eye Bo uh Beedle. were sending fake uh patients into her to spy on her and all that i mean it's just like it's it's over the top crazy so it wouldn't surprise me that it cost 400 that it cost at least in the hundreds of thousands of dollars because shannon and tamro's thing shannon was saying that she spent 300 and i think tamra spent 400 on their thing against the but that was like a defamation case like i think a restraining order case I don't know. Oh, yeah. you know what? I, don't know. I don't know these things. I don't know these things, but I, I tend to believe, I think that's a great theory that he said it was that much money and that he squirrel and it was actually, he was covering like, like he, <laughs> some of that money was not going to the lawyer and going somewhere else that I would totally believe that that's true. Yes. So Joe Benino like, well, I that wouldn't guy be surprised. Is, that's for sure. Yeah. Sorry. Go that ahead. That guy is such a train wreck and she is such, such a train wreck. The truth will always come out. It's like that old saying. The focaccia dough will always rise to the top. Am I right, guys? That's not You're like, you know what they say. Trains that get in wrecks are always going to be on the top of the water. All right? <laughs> so Frank comes in. He's like, hey, look, it's the first time I've seen your yard because you never fucking avoid me here. Am I right? Come on, guys. Come on. It's me, Frank. Then, yeah. And food is like. You feel comfortable around me? I took a page out of his brother-in-law's book. This makes people feel great. The pajamas. Um, I just really want to like get some extra mileage out of this gag here. Okay? You see what I'm doing? It's pajamas. Remember, Louis wore the pajamas. So last season, Louis wore some pajamas. I don't know if you saw the episode. Just stop me if you heard this already, okay? <laughs> I feel a little uncomfortable with a man of 40, 40, you know, grown ass in a pajamas. You're not going to lie about that. I don't know what. Yeah, well, it wasn't supposed to be a wet t-shirt contest, but you've been spinning a lot, so it is kind of awkward. <laughs> that was a wet pajamas contest. <laughs> you know what they say, wet pajamas always rise in creams. <laughs> so the men do the shots. The always rises to the top. <laughs> so they all take shots, and then Fessler comes in. Jeff Fessler. And... Um, Food is like, I was worried it was getting late. I was worried you switched sides on me. He's like, no side switching. He goes, good, because the other side have pajamas that make you feel secure at night. You remember these? You feel secure? You feel secure right now? Remember this one? Bro, it was joke. from last year. It's a joke remember from last that year. Scene? Remember that scene? So then uh, now we go to Louis Boys Night. And I was thinking, I wonder what Louis Boys Night, what what did they do? Like, we know what happens at a Gorka Boys Night. They play poker, they drink, they have fun time. But what does Louis look like? So we find out very quickly. So we're over there and Bill and Polly show up and um, like, you know, they, they pull off like, they set up some catering. I guess it's like tacos or something like that. And they're like, yeah, dig it. Uh, so, you know, enjoy yourself. A uh, little guacamole. Fresh stuff. Fresh stuff. Yeah, enjoy it. And I, I don't know what they're, there's nothing inherently lame about that food. It's actually, just, it's quite the opposite. It's like delicious, but I can already tell, oh God, this is going to be the worst boys night over at Louis' place. I just, it just has that vibe. Oh, you muted yourself, Ronnie. Oh, sorry. Um, because they're trying to compete. You know, it's like you can't have another posh fashion show. You can't just have another boys night. That's just not how it works. And also, Louis is one of those people who puts out guac and then like the whole time keeps going, you like that guac? It's fresh guac. That's yes. what it is. You know, it's not just regular guac. It's fresh. It's fresh. Like, wow, congratulations. You had someone peel an avocado. Sure. And there's like a stillness in the air. There's like no music. And it's just like, there's like empty pauses and like forced conversation about everyone's day <laughs> yeah it's it's extremely unfun it's it's like severely unfun so then we go back to the other one and uh joe is like yeah so frank what about the other what about the other man's night and frank's like i think i didn't fight the louis house and i ain't gonna lie guys i did but here i am i'm here i'm here i chose there he is. i chose there right. he is right. yeah here, well, here i is here i is <laughs> Hey, let me ask you a question, man to man. Would you hang out with a scumbag? It's like, well, well, what I say, what would I hang out with a scumbag? It's like, yeah, would Frank, would Frank Catan, yeah, hang out with a scumbag? Well, I wouldn't hang out with a scumbag. No, it's like, thank you. So, would you go to that scumbag's house? Because he's a scumbag. I'm sorry, he's a scumbag. There he is, scumbag. <laughs> 
And Frank's like, wow, who did this stuff here? Who who did all this design here, man? Did you hire someone from the Home Depot? I'm sorry, is that too soon? Is it too soon while we're talking about scumbags? So then all the men are basically laughing because he's giving him so much shit. And uh, Joe Gorga's like, you know, unfortunately, your boy Bill, he's like, he's in the cult. You know, that's the cult they got over there. That's a cult. That's fucking crazy. It's like a cult over there. And um, I would love to say that he's an asshole. But then we cut back to Teresa's house and Louis's like... I got a surprise for you. Come on. We're going to go record inspirational videos for all women. I was like, oh, no. And, okay, okay, so how it. embarrassed were you by that video that they caught of you shirtless with all the men on that beach that you're now going to recreate it on purpose oh my on this show? I was, what is wrong with you? Oh, my God. I was cringing. Like, listen, Louis, if he wants to go on a journey of, like, self-help shit and go to seminars and retreats and things like that that's fine but this is not good guys night activity this is not good girls night activity this is not anyone's night this is not how you want to spend your friday night is recording devotionals to your loved one in someone's quote-unquote man cave that's also a podcast studio i'm sorry this was the most cringy thing i've seen okay they go into this room and he set up this whole this whole podcast, like a nice studio. This is reminiscent of when Melissa Gorga had like a, a recording studio in her basement, like an over-the-top, way too professional vibe for something that's going to last for like three days, right? And they go in there, and he's like, okay, guys, huh, okay, I'm going to go first, okay? Uh, I want to do some devotionals for our wives, and I'm going to break the ice and show you how to do it, okay? So, uh, so here we go. Here comes my devotional. Oh, my God. Okay. So, I just want to break the ice and show how you go. Let me take off my shirt. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right, guys. You ready? All right. You guys ready? I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand. I'm going to look at the camera. Ooh, ooh, testing. All right, Dad. All right, Dad. We're good to go, Dad. You're doing great, Dad. Testing. testing. Oh, okay. Hi, babe. This is me, your husband, Louis. I want to take this moment. I want to tell you I love everything about you. I love when I look into your eyes. I don't know if I'm looking at your hair, your eyebrows. I love that you that when you when you're trying to make spaghetti sauce, you keep yelling, "I'm I'm coming, I'm coming." Uh I love that. Uh, <laughs> I love that you learned how to make ponchos when you was away. You could have learned to do anything, but you made ponchos. You made. Pon- I love that time that I didn't take out the trash. And you threatened to kill me with a toothbrush that you fought into a knife. That was beautiful. It was beautiful, babe. I love that you let me keep my Rice Krispie treats in a box on the countertop for days on end. Thank you for thank you for supporting my Rice Krispie treats. Uh, 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 um, you're such an aggr- amazing stepmom to my children. Even though when I said, would you be the stepmom to my children? And you got on all fours and you said, sure, let them step on me. And I said, no, babe. <laughs> That's not what that means. <laughs> The way you volunteered to go drive by the people who claimed that I owed them $300,000, the way you said you would drive by and throw apples through their windows, that was so sweet of you, babe. You didn't have to do that, babe, but I love you for it, babe. And Paul's like, all right, then. You did that. And he goes, yeah, yeah. Yo, 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 yo. I did not rehearse. That came from the heart. That came from the heart, guys. That came from the heart. <laughs> I'm like, we know. That's why we're cringing. So, uh, so- <laughs> So now Bill goes first, and he's like, okay, yeah, no problem. Okay, three, two, one, and we're on the air. My Jenny. Hey, girl. Hey, girl, hey. Just want to say, you are brat right now. You are mother. Listen, um, babe. Uh, don't mind all the rocks that she's got. She's still Jenny. She's still Jenny from the block. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Listen, remember when we, before we had kids, we used to give each other hugs, so many hugs, sing songs from Les Mis together, go out to the bar, try to buy tickets to see Bob the Drag Queen, all those good times. Just know I cherish them forever in my heart. Who knew the day that I... Put a ring on that finger that one day it would be fishing up my butthole trying to find the prostate. <laughs> the romance. And, the other baby. And he's like talking in this weird like, <laughs> remember all the hugsies we used to give each other? Mm, hugsies, remember? <laughs> this is so hard to watch. Oh my God. It was so strange. 
And then Louis like, beautiful, bro. That was so beautiful. Hey, Louis Jr., what did you think? It was beautiful, dad. It was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was beautiful too. You get two beautifuls out of two. Congratulations. Congratulations, Bill. You want to try this, Junior? You want to try it? It's like, I'm not with anybody, dad. Just try it. Give your love. Gia, call me. <laughs> Gia. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> all right, all right. That's enough. Paul, Paul, you want, you want to do one? He's like, oh, okay. All right. Dolores, thank you for always having my back. I've got yours. Lots of love. Can't wait to see you when I get home. And uh, it's ACDC, not DCAC. Just want to let you know. <laughs> you know, my heart was not electrified when I met you. And then I did meet you. And then I could only hear one song. Plug it in, plug it in. Thank you. I love you. I love you, Dolores. I love Dolores, you. one last thing. I want to finally... Divorce you from the notion that we're going to be away from each other very, very long. <laughs> I'll see you soon. <laughs> Did Fuda do one? No, because Fuda was, this was all at uh, Louis. Oh, you're right. We are. Right. So we go back to the other. I just saw Fuda in my notes. So we go back to the other one and the other party. And uh, Joe Gorg is like, oh, yeah, you know, that guy's not good, you know, because like, he joined this family and then he screwed me in two months and I shut up. I let him screw me. And then guess what? He screwed me again. And that gets what he did. He screwed me again and again. How many different pizza ovens can one man come up with? Am I right? <laughs> mm, sorry. This is Bill phoning in from the other party. Remind me again how one can get screwed by Louie over and over again. Thanks so much. Wow. Can we just be impressed that the man can go and go like that that many times in a row? Mm. <laughs> Mm, sounds like he's really pushing your button. Speaking of which, if anyone wants to push my button, I can give you directions. Mm. <laughs> uh, so Fuda's like, yeah, but like Bill's been around you guys for a good period of time. Why isn't Bill here tonight? Huh? Because you know what? If Bill was here, I'd say, hey, Bill, you like my pajamas? Do you feel safe? <laughs> Member? Member? <laughs> Speaking of callbacks to last season, we then go back to Louis's house. He's like, guys, since you all made such beautiful devotionals to your wives, here, have a complimentary skinny Italian pizza oven. <laughs> and so he's handing out the, the famous pizza <laughs> oven that caused the rift between these two, between the both these factions. And uh, it's like, that's pizza ovens with Teresa and her daughters on the, on the cover. Uh, I mean, this show... If you're not, if you don't think this show is one of the funniest things on television right now, you really need to re-examine your version of humor because this is funny ass shit. Well, my theory is that he got home and he was like, Delord, look at this. We got the skinny Italian pizza oven. And Dolores is like, you know what? Send it to the house that we're going to be vacationing at because I'm sure everybody's going to love it. <laughs> <Send> it <ahead. laughs> And the homeowner was like, you know what? I'm going to make a pizza. And, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> write it. Reg say it. Write it. Regret it. Say it. Forget it. Turn it on. Burn it down. <laughs> burn the That's whole fucking house. I mean, yeah, I mean uh, Dorinda up there in the Berkshires. <laughs> burn down a house. Okay. So um, now the meat's on the grill outside. And uh, food is like, fellas, what do you think about some bone marrow shots? <laughs> Nothing could possibly go wrong. So, like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. It's like, Frank, uh, you're going to need to not spit so much on the grill. You're putting the flames out. Sorry. <laughs> so they're doing um, bone marrow shots, and it's all fine and everything. And then they're doing their, Then there's a whole bunch of, like, yay, jug, 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 you little bitch, you little bitch. Keep chugging it. Jug, jug, jug. And, and so food is spitting out the bone marrow and the alcohol. There's a lot of, you know, bro, bro chugging and bone marrow and booze, <laughs> As ha as happens at these things. As happens. So they all go in to play some poker, and um, Fuda starts swelling up. He's like, oh, my God, my lips. What's going on with my lips? What's going on here? And yeah. uh, he's like, that fucked up my sinuses. And um, the, the, the guys just keep playing, you know. But Fuda's like, but I think I'm having an allergic reaction, guys. I don't, I don't know I don't know what the what, but uh, this isn't good. So he goes to the bathroom. And Dork Joe's is like, like, what are you hey. doing? You got a Annie, all right? You got a Annie. Hey, come on. You having an allergic reaction to what? Pussies? Because <laughs> that would explain it. Because Frank is here for the first time. Hey. 
Uh, so he goes to the bathroom, and then finally, someone. When does Benino come in? He finally well, comes so, in. He's like, so Fuda is like, he's 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 like uh, he's like, hey, look at me, I'm I'm fucking dying. And Frank's like, hey, you see his eyes are swollen up. It's, it's hilarious. And everyone, Fessler's like, maybe it's a bone marrow issue, or whatever. So. So Benino goes in there and he's like, "So what's the deal? Uh, do you uh, can you can you breathe or whatever?" And basically, Fuda's like, "He's like, no, I got a little sore throat. That's all." And so Benino's like, "All right, you you know what? You got to go to the hospital. This is anaphylactic." And meanwhile, Joe Gorga's like, "No, you know what he needs? He needs some ice. He just needs some ice. He starts spreading ice all over his forehead." <laughs> He starts putting ice all over his face. Like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, ice, that's what you do. You put ice on it, right? <laughs> and Fudo's like, just give me 20 minutes. You know, Italians don't get allergic to things. Just give me 20 minutes, okay? <laughs> this becomes, yeah. by the way, a master class in what Italians don't do. Okay, we learn very quickly many things Italians don't do, according to, jo- to Joe Fuda, John Fuda. Yeah, so Benino is like, Whoa, you got to go to the hospital right now. You can't even breathe. He's like, I ain't going to the hospital. Italians don't go to hospitals. No, no. It's anaphylactic. You got to go. It's anaphylactic. And Gorga's like, why? What's that? Anna who? Who's What's Anna? That? Who? Anaphylactic? Do we know a phylactic? He's like, why, is, why the guy need a condom? He's not fucking nobody. He's like, no, not a prophylactic, an anaphylactic. <laughs> All right. So he's like, here's what's happening to you. You're not going to be able to breathe in a second. Guys, he's having an allergic reaction. And food is like, hey. just give me 20 minutes. Italians don't have allergic reactions. <laughs> Italians only need 20 minutes, okay? And it's like, no. And Joe Gorgor is like, look, he's better already. Look, he's fine. And you see Fuda, he's got like ice water on his forehead. His <laughs> eyes are bloodshot. His lips are red and rosy. And he's like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so Benino goes to the producers. He's like, he needs a fucking ambulance right now. They need to come get him. Call an ambulance. So then <laughs> Melissa shows up and she's like, I got some water. And Joe's like, it, what are you giving him water? It's anaphylactic. And she's like, huh? What's anaphylactic? What's anaphylactic? He's like, anaphylactic. <laughs> well, hey, Fuda, you know, I know you want to lose some weight, but you should still eat something. You know, we all love you the way you want. Not anorexic, anaphylactic. <laughs> I loved actually the way that Joe Benino sprung into action. It's you know so he spends so much of the show just kind of being sort of sidekick energy. He's just sort of quiet and nice. But like when like you actually could see like when like someone needed to spring into action, he really did in a way that I, I admired. So he because he's also around a whole bunch of morons and he's I mean, the they are that- so stupid. He's like, please get the doctor. It's anaphylactic. Yeah, but I love her in Pitch Perfect. What's wrong with that? Not Anna Kendrick. Anaphylactic. <laughs> no, but I mean, they listen. They tried to bring her back, and it just didn't really work. Not Anna Kenyonis from Real Houses of Miami. Anaphylactic. How are we getting this far away from it? <laughs> <laughs> So, so then, then so Gorga is like, ah, eh, he's gonna die. Listen, every man before he dies wants to see one thing: my dick, my dick. So he whips out his dick and starts peeing while everybody's in there, and they're like, "What are you doing?" And Frank goes, "Did you ever consider your life at this point? You have an allergic reaction, and Joe Gorga's pulling out his dick. Come on." <laughs> so Melissa's like, "Guys, I know how to fix it. Sit in this chair. <laughs> that should do it." Italians love sitting in chairs. No, no, no. Italians don't like listen, Italians don't sit in chairs. Italians don't sit in chairs. <laughs> so then so the ambulance shows up and Joe Benito's like, John, you're going nowhere. Don't you gotta sit down, okay? They're gonna give you an EpiPen, they're gonna give you a pen, and you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be evaluated. Just sit there, stop. EpiPen, you know, Italians, they don't handle pens, okay? Pen, you know how an Italian writes? He just takes some. He takes some tomato sauce. Uses dips his finger in it and just writes like that. You don't use pens, okay? <laughs> Italians don't do pens. And Japanese is like, shut up. Just let him do his thing. It's like you got no. Vicks. You got Vicks. Italians do Vicks. <laughs> Italians do Vicks. <laughs> <laughs> and the paramedics like, listen, your oxygen's a little low. And he's like, ah, so what? So who needs oxygen, right? Italians don't use all the oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> Italians don't need oxygen. We breathe meatballs. <laughs> so uh, jo- uh, <laughs> we're Italian. We always got low oxygen. We live on, <laughs> we live on low oxygen. <laughs> 
<laughs> so the paramedic's like, oh, my God, your lips. That's not normal, right? It's really hard to tell because we've tried to take care of people from this show before. So just <laughs> I can't really tell what's a side effect from allergic reactions and what's not. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. What do my lips look like? Do they do they look good? <laughs> It's like they look swollen. Guys, you know him. Does he have implants or is or his lips look like this normally? Does he ever been to Siggy Flicker's uh, <laughs> uh, uh, med spa or is this the way he normally looks? And so uh, and so they're like, do you have any hives anywhere? He's like, no, nah, no, nah, no, no hives. I'm pretty normal. I mean, you know, my throat's a little closed, but, you know, I'm fine. A little nasally. You know, I can't really breathe very much. I'm sort of seeing darkness around my eyes. I, I feel like I'm getting hallucinations, but you know, it's pretty, it's, it's normal, you know, it's normal Italian shit. <laughs> so they finally just give him some Benadryl or whatever. And they're like, okay, you'll be fine. And so Melissa's like, should we do some bone marrow shots, guys? Joe Gorgon's like, guys, come on, feed the cops, all right? They work so hard. <laughs> By the way, I was so mad. They did his blood pressure and it was 120 over 75. I was like, really? John Fuda in the middle of an allergic reaction has better blood pressure than I do. <laughs> That's so I not both fair. Of us. I'm sure we were both <laughs> I jealous. Like, I'm, like, I'm working so hard. I'm working so hard. And this guy is literally, his body is shutting down and that's his blood pressure. Yeah. So then uh, we go to, Del to Dolores' house and this scene opens like most of Dolores' scenes like this. <laughs> <sighs> Dolores, what's up? Well, a lot. You know the house we were going to on the girls' trip? The girls' trip I planned? Well, guess what? It just burnt down last night. Burnt to the ground. <laughs> they think <laughs> it was electrical. But could you imagine if we were in it? I mean, they said at first we didn't know what was going on because it just smelled like pizza. But then we got there and boom, it was on the ground. <laughs> I had totally, you know, we've you spent the past few weeks talking about like, oh, they went to Dolores, um, Dorinda's house, and da 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 da. I totally forgot that their house burned down. This was in, in the news, their vacation house. So Paul's like, oh, you guys were lucky. And Dolores goes, well, that house was perfect. It took me forever to find it. It has a separate house off the grounds, so we had enough room for everyone. It was going to be, you know, two people could be separate. You know, it was just perfect. It was exactly what I needed. It's, it's unbelievable how perfect it was. It was just the most perfect house for a vacation. And you know, how am I going to find something like that again? I'm not. I don't know what to do. I love that <laughs> some people, like, this was like their house. <laughs> this was like, yeah. this is like a major, ma like, this is such a big deal. A house burning down, like, if your house burns down, like, that is, it's traumatic. It's scary. You lose things. Like, even if it's a rental, like, that's an investment that's lost. And they're like, I mean, I had found the perfect vacation house, and now it's gone. <laughs> that's what <laughs> Like the lack of perspective that they have the rest of the episode about this burnt down house. It's hilarious. <laughs> Everybody makes it about themselves because that's yeah. exactly what we're watching. We're watching real. It's like watching. a minor inconvenience for these people. Like meanwhile, someone someone lost a house and they're like, uh, now what? I it was the perfect vacation for us. Now we'll I can't believe they ruined our vacation. Like, how am I supposed <laughs> to get Teresa to talk to Margaret now? So uh Paul's like, Well, do you think it's a sign? She's like, Well, maybe it's an omen. Well, all right. Well, that's a sign. No, it's not. An <laughs> omen is a terrifying child in a movie. All right. Well, it's also a sign. No, it's not, Polly. Don't fucking argue with me. All right. Signs are aliens. Omens are children who push people off of balconies. <laughs> <laughs> right. And she goes, maybe it's an omen after what happened yesterday. He's like, what happened yesterday? Did a child get a sign? All right, drop it, Polly. Okay. <laughs> so Fessler goes to see Margaret for lunch to let her know Teresa's going to sit us down and let us know what Ma and let us know what Margaret did to her. And then I get a call from Margaret screaming, "I don't eat cold omelets." <laughs> she apparently had been having lunch with a baby, which I didn't understand because I thought Fessler was at the lunch. Anyway, it was very confusing. So uh, listen, there's nothing Teresa's going to tell me that's going to move mountains for me, okay? But I do need to listen to it. And do I feel like uh, going to this whole thing? No, I hear there's not even going to be food. But I hear both of my friends out. And I'll tell you this, I need a nap at some point, okay? I'm having hot flashes. <laughs> not, I mean, when I say hot flashes, with all due respect, not as hot as the flashes that house felt. But, you know, hot nonetheless. Oh, you're going to have more hot flashes? I'm going to lock the key in the thermostat. And she goes, don't lock the key in the thermostat. <laughs> I'm gonna she keeps mocking his accent. It's hilarious. <laughs> and he's like, Well, I'm gonna lock the key in the thermostat. All right. Well, how was your guys' night? He goes, Oh, it it was uh it was lovely. Um, Bill was there. And uh, he's, she's like, Did you guys get drunk? No, none of us got drunk actually, but uh Louis had a nice idea. 
he turned his garage into a podcast studio and he had us do a devotional video to each of our wives and girlfriends. Dolores just sort of stares at him for a while. <laughs> it's a really long pause where you're just like, because Dolores in her mind is like, wait, there's a guy's night without drinking and fucking devotionals in a podcast studio. We need to get Teresa out of there. Like, it's like just dawning on Dolores for the first time that, no, this is dangerous. This is not a nice yes. situation. Like, you just see it dawn on her face, and she's like, how do I play this right now on television? Is it hot in here? Did he lock a key to the thermostat? Aww. Devotional. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> you know. Things you say to your girlfriend. It wasn't rehearsed. It wasn't planned. It was actually it's actually very thoughtful. And she goes, "Ah, so thoughtful." Where's the video? Ah, uh, I don't, I don't know. know where the well, video is. Find it. Find it. Does love soften you, Paulie? Does it soften you? He's like, "You tell me, Dolores." She goes, "I think it's calming because listen, there are times that I would have gotten a phone call like yesterday, and the person on the phone with me, I'd make them think I was still home, and then I'd be knocking on their door in two seconds with the cold omelet on my hand, ready to shove up their asshole." <laughs> oh yeah, but if Marga called you, she wouldn't know that. And she wouldn't she wouldn't call you from her house. I'd find her. <laughs> so then we go to Teresa's and uh Teresa's like, May Madonna and your rice crispies trees. We got an up and <laughs> Oh man. So uh she has put out there is food there. This is like a breakfast, and she has put out a whole spread, like a giant pile of like pastries and bagels and two big mounds of cream cheese. Honestly, when I see that much cream cheese, the needle moves a little bit towards Teresa for me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm like, she puts out a good spread right there. Yeah, you got to love two big mounds of cream cheese. And he puts a knife. He's like, here's the knife with the cream cheese. She's like, no, nah, they got to match. They got to be matching knives for the cream cheese. <sighs> yeah, the knives have to match their cream cheese so that way everyone could um, enjoy them while they're not spreading it onto their bagels. Because you know no one's touching that cream cheese. Not this group. Yeah. So then um, Gia comes in and uh, Jim Leonard comes in. Jim, Jim said, Jim's here. So it's like, he sort of looks like an ant. Oh, it's like a what? <laughs> there was a lady who used to live across the hall from me in my old building, and he looks exactly like her now. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, and uh, she's like, Thanks for coming, Jim. I got no voice because when I get stressed out, I lose my voice. He's like, Quite frankly, to read Listen, I'd like you to lose your voice more often, right? But that's just me. That's for you, Joan. That's for you, Joan. Right. <laughs> you know what? I need people to hear from your mouth, Jim. And he's like, yeah, well, I think we just present the facts, information, and we just bring clarity to the situation, okay? Um, as the producer asks Danielle, like, what do you think you're walking into? She goes, I, I, I think I'm walking into the biggest secret told in life. Like, I, I want you to know what Margaret did because Teresa, she's like, you have to hear about this. You have to wait, wait to hear about this. So I'm just thinking of eating popcorn, eating popcorn. Boner. Quiet. Quiet back there. <laughs> you got a boner. Um, and, uh, so they're like, um, Teresa's like, oh my God, I feel like I haven't seen you in a minute. Uh -huh. So then, um, she gets some coffee for Jim and Dolores comes. Everyone starts arriving basically for this and they start gathering around and Jennifer Aiden's like, hi, tree, you're withering away. Poor Teresa, withering away, just a little faction of herself. Um, so they're talking about how stressed Teresa is. Poor Teresa, guys, poor Teresa, what has been going on? So Teresa's like, listen, obviously I know I'm going through this, Louie and I, all right? Not that you guys got to feel bad for me, but it's like the worst thing that's ever happened to me, right? Right? <laughs> so we're going to talk about Margaret here, because I never thought that this would happen to me, but like, it's a legal case that's going on. Just, yeah, we need it to make sense, because... You've been alluding to something for the past few months, and we're only getting bits and pieces of it because you've been so emotional, baby. And I want him to charge you. I want him to do the talking because your mind just spinning, baby. You're in no place to talk about these things, baby. And James is like, well, first of all, I want you to know that I've been involved with Teresa and her family for nine years. I was involved in the weeks and months before she went to prison. And I can tell you that walking into prison at three o'clock in the morning, she was less stressed than she has been in the last several months. To be fair, we also did tell her we were bringing her to friendlies. So it was a little bit of a rope-a-dope with her. 
The only time I've seen Teresa stress more is when I tried to explain to her what a wordle was. The only time I've seen Teresa stress more was when I put a box of Honey Nut Cheerios in front of her and said, here, do the maze on the back. <laughs> the only time I've seen Teresa that stress is when we got, we got a bill for lunch and in the tip section, she was writing, get a better shirt. And I tried to explain to her, no, to add a tip, you actually add money. This double the first two numbers in the bill. It's not a life hack. <laughs> so, um, so he's like, so that's why we're here today. There's someone in Louis' past that makes problems in Louis' existing life. And Jennifer Is it goes, Is it Margaret Joseph's? No, Is we'll get to her. Well, we're not really allowed to talk about the person that you just mentioned because of legal problems, but that person is real and that situation exists and existed before Teresa and Louis met one another. So you're talking about the ex? We're talking about a person. The ex? A person. Oh, you're talking about the ex. <laughs> it's a person. Can't okay, it is. so let's just make this clear. So you are calling everyone over to explain to them that Teresa knew what she was getting herself into at the very beginning? Oh, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what you just said. So Jack is like, you know, the situation is so confusing. I know, I think that gag orders, so I know he's not supposed to be saying her name, but like they were going back and forth. So, you know, she would sue him and he would sue her. And I think that Jim Led is just trying to protect Louis and not bring up certain things that might get Louis in trouble. <laughs> like, basically, he's just trying not to violate the gag order, but also totally violate the gag order by, <laughs> by talking about this lady on national TV to everyone. Right. So then I'm calling her crazy and all this other stuff. So then uh, James is like, all right, here's the timeline. Sometimes in 2021, we get info on this individual talking to Margaret. In November 2021, the lawyer representing Louis subpoenas Margaret to answer questions as to whether or not Margaret is in communication with this person, place, or thing. <laughs> Margaret responds that she got the subpoena, but she wasn't going to come to court. And I am going to get to the pertinent part, okay? Everyone, okay, I'll give you guys a second to look up the word pertinent. All right, we all on the same page? Okay, great. The individual that Louis is involved in the litigation with had been speaking to Margaret Josephs and Joseph told this person she was planning on exposing Louis Reyes and Teresa Juidice based on the information this person, whoever it may be, can't say who it is, had provided. Oh, my gosh. This is such bullshit. Okay, so what information was that? First of all, Teresa and Jen just got caught working with all of these bloggers, and also Jim, by the way, texting all these bloggers, sending them all these information to screeners and everything else to bring down Margaret. Last year, Louis bragged about having Bo Deedle following everybody around. They were calling this friend of Margaret's to get gossip on Margaret. You guys have no leg to stand on in this. That's it. She talked to the ex. Who cares? The ex was already in People Magazine doing walk across the country in her wedding dress exactly. talking about what a narcissistic abuser Louie was. What are you fucking... Margaret tried to warn you that this lady was doing it and to take care of it on camera and you've turned it into this huge fucking war instead of dealing with it when you should have dealt with it in the first place. And even if even if the even if this lady did talk to Margaret, even if the lady was like, I gotta tell you about Louie and Margaret's like, okay, sure, I want to hear because of course Margaret probably wanted to hear. Margaret loves getting all the gossip, but like we haven't seen Margaret really weaponize it. Not that I can remember. I, we've never seen Margaret go around and tell every single person, you know what? I heard under very good, like, you know, I, I heard, I'm not going to say how I know, but Louis did X, Y, and Z and this and that, Larsa Pippin, and, uh, you know, pass, pass it along, pass it along. She doesn't do that, but we see Teresa and Jennifer do that time and time again. Yes, we haven't seen, and, and this whole, like, w based on the information that this person has provided, what? What did March attack her with? What information has March attacked Teresa with that she got from this ex? We have not seen it. All Margaret has been doing is defending herself from Teresa. Now, last season, I said right at the beginning, Marge was really stupid for doing that whole, like, you know what? You need to get out in front of it. Just go talk about it on camera. Go talk about Louis' video or whatever that whole thing was. I knew that that was a huge mistake, and it's still going on to this day because Marge couldn't just say, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I brought it up on camera. She yeah. had to be like, but I was trying to protect you. You know, 
all that, I'm not saying Marge is perfect. And I 100% believe that Marge did talk to this lady. The problem is Jen and Teresa both have set a precedent here that they have no leg to stand on. This is ridiculous. And yeah. you're dating Louie. And you already knew Louie was being accused of all of this shit. His wife is the one. His uh, ex fiance is the one accusing him of all of this shit. Not Margaret. So the one you're mad at is the ex. And the one making it public is the ex. And People Magazine is the one publishing the ex. Not Margaret. Yeah, and like, so if I can step into Teresa's shoes for a moment, like, I can imagine, you know, Teresa hates this ex, she loves Louie, and she just sees this ex as making life difficult for her husband and their family, and then she finds out someone in her circle was talking to this person. I can understand being like, that's fucked up. I Like, why would you talk to that person? It makes me, it, that actually hurts me, and I'm mad. But Teresa's like, Margaret is the root of all evil, Margaret is coming for me, Margaret's trying to destroy our family. It's like, mm, that is taking a step too far, especially when you have repeatedly done things like this. We literally watched that scene of Teresa going from person to person at Evan Goldschneider's party, telling people that Evan was cheating on Jackie at his own party. Like, this is the person who does that. And the reason that Teresa suspects that Margaret is trying to expose Teresa and bring down Teresa is because that's how Teresa moves herself. So she assumes everyone else moves just like that. But in fact, it's Teresa who moves like that. And it has Margaret just probably just wanted to get some gossip. That's all. I'm not saying that so that's great, but that's probably they what happened. They dropped this quote unquote bomb and no one really reacts. So Teresa's like, but guys, I want to tell you, this will make your head spin. I mean, Louie ain't allowed to speak about her the person plays the team. So she's not allowed to speak about him. So she gets her information out through Margaret. What information? What information did Margaret get out? Literally nothing. The only thing Margaret pointed to was a video that this guy made that was leaked on the beach yes. crying and referenced the the uh, the uh, article in People Magazine about him being a narcissist, you know, emotional abuser or whatever yes. the hell that was. It was all public. Also, by the way, like if this, <laughs> like, I hate to break it to you, Teresa, but like, if you want to get information uh, out about people anonymously, we do live in the world of the internet, and people can do it pretty easily. Okay, she knows because she Further literally account. hired bloggers to do it. She was paying people <laughs> off to do it. Yes, exactly. Oh my so, gosh, so silly. So James is like, and Margaret gets her information through Teresa and Louie and is trying to hurt them with it. And Dolores just goes, yeah. She tells us, this is not a jaw-dropping revelation. Okay. <laughs> and so then we see a flashback to three years ago of Margaret saying, I didn't say he was, he was abusive. All oh, the girlfriends are the ones saying that he's abusive. And then in another scene in the cowboy place where Teresa's screaming at Marge and saying, you're talking to people from his past. She goes, why would I talk to people from his past? Maybe someone contacted you. How would they contact me? You know everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Serena from Tenafly. I admit, I know her. So Dolores is like, but you know what? Margaret's always denied that she's spoken to us. So now we don't know if that's true. I'll figure it out. So Teresa Yeah, so on this one, I do believe that Margaret has spoken to her. My guess is that after this season, the lady probably contacted her, like, oh my God, you're going to Teresa over you're going to work with Teresa over this? Let's talk. Margaret was probably like, Good, come over. I'll have a tea yeah. tray set up for you. I'll have some nice iced coffee ready for you. It tastes like Snickers. It's like a miracle. You never believe it. <laughs> I'm sure. I, I'm sure. Margaret just wanted to get the gossip. So then um, Teresa's like, yeah, I remember the videos that were coming out about Louis. I mean, the videos that Louis shot himself, <laughs> you mean? And Teresa's like, right after I met Louis, these videos he had between him and his ex ended up surfacing on Instagram. And now we're putting everything together because Margaret was in contact with the individual. And that's how they were getting out. I'm like, I guarantee Margaret was not putting out that video. I guarantee the ex was putting out that video. <laughs> like, like the ex doesn't need Margaret to put that video out, to leak that video. Yeah, that video was already out. So um, now maybe to get it spread around, but I would think that it wouldn't be very hard to get it spread around when you're talking about Teresa's also, boyfriend who's on the show on national TV. Also, I guarantee that if Margaret had access to that video before the 
before America, she would have saved that shit for the show. It would have been a whole scene like, Melissa, I got to show you something. I got to show you something about your future brother-in-law. Look at this video. Do I show it to Teresa? Do I not show it to Teresa? It would have been a whole thing. It would have been, Margaret has a video. Is she, who is she going to show it to? It would have been the whole talk of the whole thing. She would not have just put it up when they're not even shooting. Sorry, that's yeah. just not the way it works. Yeah. So then... um Let's see. So Danielle's like, uh, did you do any of this, Jackie? Did you do any of this? Did she talk about that? Because you guys was close, right? And Jackie says, oh, I've never, I've I've known what's been going on through the years, but Margaret never told me anything about talking to the ex. She goes, I know what's going on. I just can't prove it. <laughs> you still can't prove it. So Jennifer Aiden's like, you know what? Yeah, I would like to see this proof because I thought Teresa said, I've got proof on what's going on but all she's all she's proven is that they subpoenaed margaret and margaret said fuck you i'm not coming to the court like it was this is not a criminal case you can't just subpoena me to come to the court and she said no they haven't proven anything where's the proof they just they saw margaret's name she saw margaret's name in this and then like it supported the theory that Teresa has developed ever since that season and um and not like that's enough for her. <laughs> but they put Margaret's name into the case by name, having their lawyer subpoena Margaret. And then she's like, that's proof because Margaret was called by a lawyer. It was your lawyer. <laughs> Where's the proof? Now, I don't doubt that there is proof. But where is it? You're not showing it right now. This meeting is terrible. And what are we supposed to eat with all this cream cheese? I know. And Jennifer Aiden feels like she has some high ground now because she's like, you know, uh, Margaret didn't like it when we were continuing to talk to Laura for all those months. But then I finally stopped talking to Laura because I realized it was a shitty thing to do, baby. But Margaret calls me a hypocrite. But meanwhile, she's the hypocrite, baby. You are a hypocrite. So Jennifer Danielle's like, Aiden, all right. Quietly right. redeeming herself. Like that, or she thinks she is. She's like, by the way, everyone, I took the high ground after I took the low ground. Yeah. She's like, I stopped talking to that lady after I'd already gotten every piece of information to use against Margaret and it didn't work. And then I got called out on national TV and my, what do they call it in uh, CIA movie or spy movies where they're like, my source was burned. So yeah, yeah your source was burned. How are you going to keep using her? Like you're doing everybody a huge favor. So Danielle's like, all right, so let me get this straight. So Teresa and Jack come friends with Laura to dig shit up on people. All right. And then we see a clip of that with Laura saying, Laura's Margaret with uh, Jen saying Laura's Margaret's best friend and they had some sort of falling out and so Laura was trying to get in touch with me and Teresa to tell us <laughs> so funny and Danielle's like meanwhile people think that Bo Deedle did a smear campaign <laughs> and we see the Bo Deedle stuff at the reunion and Danielle's like so if this is true how is any of this different from what Margaret did so uh, then the doorbell rings and everyone's like, what's that? What's that? Someone's at the door. So Teresa like that looks at the video intercom and she's like, oh my God, that's weird. There's a guy with a beard. It's creepy. He's creepy, beard person. <laughs> they all talk about how gross and creepy this guy is, which poor guy. Like, can the man just do his damn job? You know? know. So Teresa goes to open it and it's like Santa Claus out there, and he's got a big, huge funeral flower thing. And he goes, Are you Teresa? She's like, Yeah. And he goes, these are yours, kid. And he goes, I don't know who it is. So she reads the card. Oh, my God. Dear Teresa and James, sorry for the loss of your dignity. Love, 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 Marge. <laughs> love, love, love. <laughs> and Teresa's like, oh, she is so disgusting. It's from Marge. No, I don't want it. Refuse it. Don't let it stick it up her ass. Take it off my property. And the guy's like <laughs> chuckling. He's like, all right. <laughs> Throw it a stick it up her ass. I mean, savage. So um Teresa's like, oh my god, that was from Margaret. And she goes, it was like a funeral thing. And she's like, did it say anything? She goes, yeah, like I didn't even read the whole thing because it was like so long. But it said like me and Jim, like something, something about losing dignity. And Danielle's like, that is the most gangsta move I ever heard about in the whole existence of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the delivery man's in his truck taking off his taking off his disguise. <laughs> as Danielle's dad's like, I came so close. <sighs> <sighs> they wouldn't let I'm me also... through to see my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I tried everything. So Teresa's like, I fucking love it because she's gotten caught and she's like fucking spinning right now. And James Leonard's like, okay, everyone, I gotta go. 
I've no proven nothing done. here, so it's time for me to go. Let yet another case that I've lost. Okay. <laughs> I know. There's only one more train left to Atlantic City, so I got to catch it. <laughs> so Listen, things things may get messy here, but back home they're getting messy. I got to get back <laughs> to the office. So Danielle's like, well, so he leaves, and Danielle's like, guys, how are we going to go away for this trip? I mean, that's what I want to know. And Dolores goes, well, we're not. The house we got, we're going to burn to the ground. And they're like, oh my God. <laughs> She's like, Teresa's like, I mean, if that's not a fucking sign, I don't know what it is. Well, I would say it's an omen more than a sign, but that's fine. <laughs> and uh, she goes, yeah, like five alarm fire burnt to the studs. And Jen's like, what a divine invention, baby. Oh my God, that is such an om. That is a fucking om, guys. That's an om. Danielle goes, it's an omen. She goes, oh, omen, sorry. Again, I'm just imagining the homeowners listening to people on TV saying that their house burning down was divine intervention. <laughs> I'm sure they're like, yeah, that's exactly right, how guys. we see it. <laughs> Great. I was raising oh this home. God, that is such Carmen. So <laughs> Dolores is like, okay, I think that all of us are going to need to sit in a calm environment. Might I suggest rails? And just the calmest, the calmest restaurant we've ever had been to on this show. <laughs> Rails. The, the the restaurant that literally had to build a separate room with padded walls to put us in every time we come in there. <laughs> you know, we just have to say what we're gonna say to that person's face because I never want to regret that I didn't say anything. Okay. I'm gonna plan a dinner. And Danielle's like, yeah, put us in a soundproof room, four walls. Like, hey, am I <laughs> make sure my dad's not invited. But already, this is my closure, right? Because, like, Margaret knows it's happening, and she's fucking squirming right now. I was like, what about the own that was just delivered to your door are you not getting? Like, Teresa just has no idea how she just got her ass fucking handed to her. I know. Well, you know what? I think there's more than just two people that have to say something in this room. And in order to move on from each other, you need to have said what you've said peacefully. What's peacefully? It's when you do things in a nice, calm way. Huh? You know, when you don't scream at someone the moment they say something about you? I'm not familiar. Can you explain more of that concept? <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically that. So um, next time is the season finale. Dun, 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 dun. Ugh, it's going to be wild. I cannot wait to watch this thing. This is, um, I mean, this is it. This is it, guys. I and mean, this is this is it. This is the final the final this is the final of jersey as we know it. And it's depressing. I mean, that flower thing was pretty great. It was great. Um, but yeah, there's gonna be some sort of special, right? There's a special a, a watch special where the cast watches the finale and reacts to it separately. And that's gonna be our version of the reunion. It's not even a reunion. It's sort of interesting. It actually makes me wonder, like. The with Vanderpump Rules, we had that moment where they all watched like the last 15 minutes of, of the season finale. And that was actually pretty interesting to watch them watch it. And so it seems like Bravo is like, okay, let's lean into that. And that's what we'll do for New Jersey. So um yeah, it's gonna be an interesting next few weeks. We'll see. We'll all see. right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. We will be back tomorrow with some below deck Mediterranean. If you want all our Love Island recaps, those are over on Patreon. And um, this week we'll be doing another fun return to bonus episodes. And guess what? Our next what? episode is House of the Dragon, and that is episode twenty five hundred. Get out! That's our twenty five hundred episode. Yeah, isn't that wow. crazy? Unless this is a two-parter, in which case part two would be. A, I don't. I don't know how long this is. So maybe it's today. We can't have. We can't have part two be a two. We can't have like our twenty-fifth hundred episode be a be a part two of something. Okay, that would be sad. Well, then there you go. Then it's House of the Dragon, twenty-five hundred episodes. That's crazy. Then I'm um, so crazy. milking your prostate. <laughs> Just oh my god, us. I'm milking my prostate right now. That's wild. <laughs> I can't believe we've, we've done 25. Okay, well, you know what? I'm going to wax nostalgic about it on House of the Dragons. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. 
Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickolus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurt. Sipped some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. We got our wish, it's Jen Plish. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie, my favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Chadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender, the incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. Ring that bell for Rachel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys.